everyone. Welcome to my channel. Here you'll find unique and somewhat creative home lab projects that either don't have much content or reference material available or typically hard to find. So a bit about me. I'm a cyber analyst by profession. My job often takes me away from home, which means I have to manage my home lab uh, remotely uh, numerous times. This channel um, will focus on that as well as sharing insights and tips on how to effectively manage and optimize your home lab for remote environments. But enough about me, as I'll share more as my channel grows. But for today's content, I'm going to share how I'm currently managing my home lab using Caddy uh, Reverse Proxy of choice. So in the next video after this, I'll focus on how I integrate CrowdSec and Cloudflare tunnels within my environment. Um, but for this video, we'll focus on setting up Caddy with TLS certificates from Let's Encrypt and Cloudflare. And I'm assuming you already know, um, you already have a domain registered for Cloudflare. But if not, um, I'll link a record of a source on how to register one. Um, so let's dive right in. First, I'll walk you through my compose file, which I use to set up and manage my category reverse proxy. For this video, I'm assuming that you know what Docker and Docker Compose are and have an understanding of how to use them. But if you're not familiar, Docker Compose is a tool that allows you to define and run multi-container Docker applications. I'll break down what uh, each part of the Compose file is doing. So I can go ahead and open it up by running code. As you can see, I already have the file there in this directory. You can run code compose.yaml. From there, we'll start at the top. Uh, first, we have our services section. This is where we define services that make up our application. In this case, we have one service called Caddy. The build configuration tells us uh, the build the caddy and is using the Docker file located in the current directory uh, as annotated with the period. Uh, the Docker file creates a custom caddy server images with several additional plugins. And I'll go over that right now. I uh, can open it up, code Docker file. All right, looking at the Docker file, um, the first line sets the base image. Um, for the build stage to caddy builder and names the stage as builder. Um, the run instruction executes the X caddy build command, which builds the custom caddy server with the following uh, specified plugins. Um, the with flag, all it does is just um, include additional modules of plugins. In this case, the Docker file includes the following plugins. Um, for this build, we have the Cloudflare and then um, there's three CrowdSec bouncer plugins that we're going to use later on um, for the CrowdSec integration in another video. Um, but for this specific setup, all you need is the first plugin, the Cloudflare. Um, that's for the DNS channel support within uh, Cloudflare. And then you have from the Caddy Latest, which sets the base image for the final stage to Caddy Latest, which is the official Caddy image from the Docker registry. Um, lastly, you have the copy instruction, which copies the build Caddy binary from the builder stage over to the final stage. Um, this ensures that the final image contains the custom built Caddy server with the specified plugins. All right, moving back over to the compose file. We're naming our container caddy. For easy identification. Uh, so when you're running multiple containers, each container gets its own IP address. However, these uh, IP addresses can change if the container starts or uh, restarts or is recreated. Uh, using container names instead of IP addresses just ensures that services can always find each other. Simplifies communication between services on Docker within the same network, uh, which I'll discuss more shortly. 
Um, you have the restart policy just states that the caddy container will automatically restart unless we manually stop it. For the environment variables, we're using the .env file to store them, which will include our Cloudflare email as well as our API token. Um, these, these variables are passed to the container, making it easy to manage our sensitive information. And I'll discuss the API token um, in a later part. For the port section, we'll map port 80 and 443 to the host, on the host to the corresponding ports in the container. This allows our caddy server to handle both HTTP as well as HTTPS traffic. The first port, uh, in case you didn't know, the first port is the host and the second port corresponds um, to the port within the container. Next, we have our volume section, which allows us to persist data and configuration files outside of the container. Here, you can see we're mapping several directories from the host container or from the host to the container to include our configuration data as well as our log files. For networks, we'll be connecting our caddy container to the caddy network, which we have to create externally prior to starting container. And then any service that we want to use with this caddy uh, will be connected to this network. And then lastly, we're defining uh, the caddy network as an external network, which just means that we need to create it manually before running the Docker Compose file. Now let's move on to the caddy file. The caddy file is a configuration file used to define the behavior and settings for caddy. It allows you to configure various aspects, such as setting up reverse proxies, managing TLS certificates, as well as defining URL routing. You could also use a config.yaml file, but I won't be going over that as my current setup is utilizing the caddy file. So at the top of the caddy file, you'll have your global configurations. Admin off just disables the caddy admin API for your server's configuration. You have the client IP headers, X484, which configures the server to respect the X484 header, which is often used by proxies to pass the client's actual IP address. Uh, this will be useful for utilize when we are utilizing Cloudflare tunnels, and I'll go over that. You have the trusted, trusted proxies and trusted proxy strips, which ensures that only requested requests from trusted IP proxies are accepted, protecting your server from spoofed IPs. The next section you have are the default headers, and I'll just cover a few of the configurations. You have the front frame design, which prevents your site from being embedded in iframes. You also have your STS, your strict transport security, which ensures all connections are encrypted for 180 days. That's how I have mine set up, which is you know, 15 million seconds. You also have your custom headers uh, with the same origin and force HTTPS. Moving down, you'll have your IP whitelist. Now, this is where I define a list of allowed IP addresses and blocking everything else. And I'll show you an example of how I have that implemented once we have everything set up and running. Now for the domain specific uh, configurations. The first domain configuration will be used for our Cloudflare tunnel setup. And we are using the DNS Cloudflare for automated certificate management. And then we also have the log set up with the verbosity at info level. We'll be using Photo Prism for the purpose of this demo. And here you see the reverse proxy rules for external Photo Prism access. And again, this will be via Cloudflare tunnels. And the, all this is saying is that the reverse proxy is pointing to the photo prism container with the port number. And then you have your trusted proxies, which is for the purpose of this demo, I just put all proxies. 
all IP addresses. Next, we'll cover our test subdomain. This is a wildcard domain. We know it'll match any subdomain under the test.jimmyhome.net. We have the, of course, same as above, we have the TLS configuration um, using the Cloudflare DNS API token for rotating TLS certificates. Uh, we also have the propagation delay set at two minutes to ensure proper DNS propagation. We also have the import default headers and the import Genie Home IP whitelist functions, which will just import the functions that were shown above to utilize them. Moving on to the host specific handlers, again, we'll be using PhotoPrism as an example. Uh, we have the set main setup that we are configuring for this reverse proxy. We are using the container name and the port name, the same as above. If you look at the compose.yaml file for PhotoPrism, you will see that the port that I'm using for PhotoPrism is 2342 on the host. Um, and that corresponds with the container name PhotoPrism. So that's why I'm using PhotoPrism port 2342 within my caddy file to set up the reverse proxy. So now we're going to create our Cloudflare API token that we'll, we will place in the .env file. So what you want to do is you want to navigate to API tokens that'll be under my profile, API tokens. From here, you want to click on create a token and you want to scroll all the way to the bottom to create custom token. From here, you're going to name your token and then you're going to give it the following permissions. It's going to be zone for both. It's going to be zone read and then DNS edit. And that's pretty much all you need to configure. Continue the summary and create the token. So real quick, you can see that I pulled up the .env file. This is where you'll put your random API token. And then you'll also have your email address for your Cloudflare right here as well. Now that we have everything set up, we can proceed with building the container. So what you want to do is you want to navigate to the project directory. Um, just ensure that you're in the same directory as your compose file. Um, you want to execute the following command. To do docker compose up as the All right, and if I already had mine up and running, but if you didn't, it's going to go through the process of building out the container um, and then it'll run it. You also want to verify that there are no errors running um, using the following command cd docker logs caddy. As you can see, it looks like everything is running, there are no errors. Now let's test to see if we can access PhotoPrism using the reverse proxy. So we'll navigate to the URL that we configured, HTTPS, photo.test.gmail.net. As you can see, the app loads up. And we're able to access the page. As you can see right here, we have the trusted TLL certificates. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe as well as share the video. This is a new project for me, and I am new to YouTube. So please leave a comment on how I can make this video or future videos better. In my next video, 
I will be covering Cloudflare tunnels as well as the integration of CrowdSec. Thank you for watching. Until next time.